Governor Rick Scott and State Attorney General Pam Bondi won a late-night victory in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. It sided with them and blocked a federal judge's order that would have required the state to overhaul its process of restoring felons' rights. Governor joins us here on The Morning Show. Always Good a morning. pleasure to have you here. How you doing? So this is an issue that surfaced back in 2011. You and the Attorney General worked diligently to bring about some changes. Reaction to the court ruling last night? First off, I think it's clear. The people that elect us rather than appointed federal judges should decide our clemency process. Let's remember who we're talking about. Some of these felons murder, right? Crimes against women, children, abuse of the elderly, abuse of the disabled, hate crimes. There ought to be a thorough process uh, to deal with this. When they commit those crimes, they should, they've given up the right to vote. So we have a, we have a thorough process. Over 3,000 people have gotten their voting rights back. Felons have gotten their voting rights back since I got elected. Uh, and here's the positive. The, the recidivism rate for people who have gone through the process has actually gone down, which is good for victims, good for safety. Uh, we're at a 46-year low in our crime rate. And I'm always going to uh, be on the side of the victims and their families rather than felons. Now, this issue may not be reconciled just yet because Amendment 4 is on the ballot later this year. Right. In fact, there's a rally in Tallahassee for supporters later today. Your message to them? Well, I believe people need, you know, if you're a convicted felon, you need to show us that you've turned your life around. I mean, if you've committed these heinous acts, show that you've turned your life around. Come back and get involved in society. Um, and that's the process we have set up right now through the clemency process. People go through and they show us. They've changed, they've changed their life. That's what you want. I mean, it's a, it's a good day when you see somebody that's completely changed their life from a, a life of violent crime uh, to a, a law-abiding citizen of the state. Now, I know what brought you here to Jacksonville this morning is that you've picked up an endorsement, and it basically talks to your growth of Florida's economy. You want to tell people about the endorsement? This is the first time in the history of the state that the National Chamber of Commerce, the state, and the local have all come together together and endorsed a candidate. And I believe what they're endorsing is the fact that I'm going to take to the, to, to the federal level exactly what we've done here by cutting taxes nearly a hundred times, cutting regulation, improving the permitting process, we've added 1.5 million jobs. Think about that. The four years before I got elected, the state lost 832,000 jobs. Now we have job openings. A lot. We have over 250,000 job openings. So these chambers have all come together uh, to endorse my candidacy for the U.S. Senate. And I'm going to go to Washington and say, we need to improve the economy so every family, a kid like me growing up in public housing, can grow up and say, you know what, I believe that because I live in this country, I can be anybody. I can that, do anything. That said, there's some challenges. There was a survey that was done, I think it was over in the Tampa area toward the end of March. And basically it was of small business owners. And the conclusion was that the small business owners worry that there's a lack of skilled workers here, lack of a skilled workforce, and economic uncertainty. How do we reconcile those two issues? Well, I, I, well first off, it's clear that what's happened is now that we have this unbelievable job growth in our state, we have job openings. What we've got to do with our education system is say, where are the job openings and clearly combine you know, our education system to the job openings. Uh, every year I send a letter to our higher education system and say, these are the ten, your 10 most popular degrees. These are the 10 big job openings in the state. Let's make sure we, we're, those are together. We need to invest, we need to continue to invest more dollars in our technical schools uh, because that's where we're seeing a lot of openings along with STEM degrees. So it goes to the issue of training. Absolutely. We've, we have, we have got to get, we've got to make sure our education system is consistent with where the job openings are. And that's, we, we've made a lot of progress, but especially with this unbelievable economy, we had, there's a lot of progress we need to make. Let me ask you one more question about the uh, school system these days. We all know that there's an effort to put school resource officers in our kids' classrooms because of what happened in Parkland. Clay County is str struggling to find the money, as is, is St. John's County. What can the state do to try and go ahead and, and affect that? Well, you know, we came together and I signed a school safety bill th basically th a little over three weeks after Parkland. So I worked with the legislature, I worked with law enforcement, educators, and mental health counselors, and came up with a bill that I think is going to improve school safety. At the state level, we put more money in for law enforcement in our schools and we required it. We put more money into mental health counselors. We put more money into school hardening. So we all have to come together and make sure we spend the money in that manner that helps, uh, helps uh, you know, make sure we have all these there. Since I got elected, we've had a 4.5 billion dollar increase in the amount of money for K-12 education in the state. 
Right now, our school systems around the state are sitting on $2 billion worth of cash. I think Duval is $62 million worth of cash. So we've got to go spend Allocation the dollars. resources. We've got, we've got to go spend the dollars to take care of our kids. I'm a grandparent. I want my kids to go to school and be safe. I'm sure every parent is in the same position. Governor Scott, always a pleasure. By the way, he really is. Friday nights, the grandkids come over, and that's his priority. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's fun. Mm -hmm.